Hi everyone, my name is Robies and today I bring you another episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History, the series where we compare the representations of characters and other elements depicted within one of the Assassin's Creed games to their actual history. Please be warned of major story spoilers ahead. For today's episode, we'll be exploring the history of the French-Canadian fur trader, military officer and explorer Louis-Joseph Gauthier de la Vérandrie. To start, we will explore his early life during the pre-game history, then we will cover his life in Assassin's Creed Rogue during the in-game history, and lastly we will summarize the differences between his actual life and his portrayal in the game. Starting with the pre-game history, Louis-Joseph was born on November 9, 1717 in Lille-Auvache, Quebec, to Pierre Gauthier de Varenne and Marie-Anne Dandeneau du Sable. Little is known of his youth other than the fact that he received a basic education. When he was older, he received an additional education in terms of mathematics and cartography. In 1735, he travelled west to Fort Saint-Charles with his father and a group of enlisted men to join the family business of fur trading. In the following months, his older brother was killed in a confrontation with natives who opposed their advance. Meanwhile, Louis-Joseph was tasked by his father to re-establish Fort Maurepas, which he succeeded in doing, and for which it is said his father gave him the title of Chevalier as a distinction for his work. He then began expanding some of the connections the French had with certain native tribes, even helping some of them in lessening the effects of smallpox that had begun to spread. He continued his expedition with his father in 1738, where they explored parts of contemporary North Dakota, eventually returning to Fort La Reine, which they had themselves established. In 1739, Louis-Joseph's father sent him on an expedition around Lake Winnipeg with the goal of finding a site for a fort requested by their Cree allies. His exploratory mission was successful and he brought back what information he had gathered. In 1740, he commanded Fort saint Charles during his father's departure. He spent this following time preparing for a voyage southwest. In mid-1742, Louis-Joseph, his brother, and some French and native allies departed the fort. They spent many months exploring, hoping to find another accessible path to the Pacific. They met with various native tribes, eventually finding some in the midst of a war. Louis-Joseph spoke with the leading faction of an alliance of tribes who welcomed them. Despite only wanting information and possibly a guide, however, de la Vérandrie and his men soon joined the tribes in early 1743 as they marched against their enemies. They were surprised to find that the opposing tribe had fled the area, and some feared that this meant a possible attack on their homes. Therefore, many of the native soldiers disbanded and returned to their villages. A few months later, the French decided to leave as they had not gathered the information they had hoped for. On their continued voyage, they met another tribe near contemporary South Dakota and passed a juncture of the Missouri River. Before moving on, de la Vérandrie buried a lead plaque with an engraving of the year, along with his name, his father's name, the name of the king, and of the marquis which they served. This plaque would eventually be discovered in 1913, proving that these French explorers had indeed reached this western area 61 years before the Lewis and Clark expedition, which were originally thought to be the first explorers in the area. Historically, in the following few months, Chevalier returned to Fort de la Reine with his party, stopping along the way to visit with various native tribes. Despite his over 14 month long voyage not bringing back the exact results they were hoping for, the expedition did greatly increase their geographical knowledge of the region and improve the French influence with many native tribes. This association also expanded their commercial network in terms of fur and resource trading. In later 1743, de la Vérandrie's father resigned from service and was replaced as commandant du poste de l'Ouest by Nicolas Joseph de Noël de Fleurimont. Louis Joseph, however, was kept under his service and commanded three posts. In 1747, he followed Nicolas Joseph to New France. In early 1748, Louis Joseph participated in a military expedition against the opposing Mohawk faction. He then after received a promotion from the king to the rank of second ensign for his service, and later that year, unfortunately, his father passed away. At this point, he spent a few years settling his affairs and later started a fur trading partnership with Luc de Lacan and his brother François Gauthier du Tremblay. This enterprise continued with success, despite an ongoing bitter rivalry with Joseph Marin de la Malgue, who was another of the commandants. It would have been around this general period in time historically where we first met Louis Joseph in Assassin's Creed Rogue, as Shea and Liam caught up with him after his vessel was attacked. Historically, in 1755, de la Vérandrie returned to Montreal due to the Seven Years' War's outbreak, where he was stationed in a garrison position. While there, he married Marie Amable de Montigny. He spent most of his time involved in military affairs and was even made the commandant of Le Poste de l'Ouest in 1756. Following the death of his wife due to illness, he remarried in 1758 to Louise Antoinette de Misillard de l'Epervanche. He spent his following years moving between military posts, eventually playing a role in gathering native tribes to strategically defend Lake Champlain. Following the capture of Quebec and the end of the war, however, he left Canada and voyaged for France with the purpose of settling more business matters. Although he had the intention of returning to Canada, it is said he died during this trip when his vessel, named the Auguste, sank off Cape Breton due to severe winds on November 15, 1761. 
In summary, despite only a few years of his life being displayed in Rogue, it should be considered that the game does refer to his past in a few interesting ways, despite there being some differences. Firstly, it should be clear that Louis Joseph was not a member of the Assassin Order, however it was a fitting position for him in the game since that was the faction associated with the French. Secondly, although I cannot say it definitively, I was not able to locate any record that he possessed a vessel named the Gerfaux. Lastly, he was not killed by the Templar Shea Cormac aboard the Gerfaux in 1760, but instead died when the ship he was on, the Auguste, sank following a storm in 1761. Aside from these minor differences, however, his history and background were rather well represented as the game made multiple references to his military and exploration-filled career, while also pointing out his cartographic abilities, his knowledge of trading, and his militaristic view of honor and the need for respect in an organization. With that final fact, we've finished another episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, I highly recommend you try out one of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you all for watching. Please leave any suggestions for future characters, groups, events, or locations from any of the Assassin's Creed games that you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you all in a future historical episode. It is Capitaine Louis Joseph Gautier, Chevalier de la Verandrie. And you are dreaming if you think any training could make you into a proper assassin. Do you even know what that means? It means being responsible for an ancient and proud tradition. It means obeying your mentor without question. How else will we ensure freedom for the human race? Them's pretty words, Chevalier. But I don't feel too free at the moment. Well then, feel educated! <laughs>